How you doing? This is Dean Miller back with another video of The Significant Life of Jesus. This is where Jesus is giving a Sermon on the Mount. I'll be doing it on the Beatitudes 5 and 6 today. Um, last week we did, the last two weeks we did the first four Beatitudes. So I'm going to read Matthew 5 through 1, 5, 1 through 11 again and we'll get into it. Jesus gives a Sermon on the Mount. Jesus gives the Beatitudes. One day he saw the crowds gather and Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. He, his disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach each of them. God bless those who are poor and realize the need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will show mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you, and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. So this one, uh, we'll get into uh, the Beatitude Number five, it's God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Um, the tie it to the Old Testament, Psalms 41, 1. Oh, the joys of those who are kind to the poor. The Lord rescues them when they are in trouble. The Bible speaks of God's care for the weak and the poor and the needy. We'll be blessed if we show this kind of mercy just like he does. Show generosity like God does and bless people like God, like he blesses us. You know, do unto others as they as they would do unto you. If you can't show mercy on others, then how do we expect God to show mercy on us when we get our judgment day? So the clashing word, worldly values is strength without feeling. Strength can be the power of the mind, intellectual force, power of any facility, any strength of memory. Strength of reason or strength of judgment. Having these qualities over anyone who is weak or down with feelings for that person can be a negative impact on someone's life. You acting like you're better than somebody or acting like you have power over somebody because you have money over the poor is, you know, could have a very negative impact on somebody. Think how Jesus would approach a situation, you know, when he saw the poor, did he treat them any different than he treated the rich? A lot of times he treated them even better. And if we think you're doing what pleases God before you judge someone or treat, think of what you're doing and try to please God when you judge someone or treat someone who is poor that is in need. Don't rule with an iron fist and show mercy like Jesus and God does. Um, there was a story in the Bible about a rich man that went past a gate with a poor man laying there every day you know he had the means to help him but he didn't and the poor man made it to heaven and the rich man didn't and he was standing in hell asking why why he didn't get to go up to heaven you know it's a powerful story so how do we develop this attitude ephesians 5 1 through 2 Im imitate god therefore in everything you do because you are his dear children live a life filled with love following the example of christ he loved us and offered him as a sacrifice for us a pleasing aroma to God. We should follow and act. We should follow God and act just like Jesus did. He was like, he laid out the path of how we should act. Because we are all children of God. You know, as parents, we need to remember that our kids are always watching us. They're always watching our every move, and they pick up our habits that we have. Like when you're driving and you're yelling at people, cussing, the way we talk, the way we treat other, we argue. Parents who are show infidelity or sleep around with other people you know these kids are watching us you know and they pick up on them habits you don't want them to pick up the bad habits that we do do we, we want to try to make the best for our kids lives we need to be more positive role models for our children jesus great love allowed him to be sacrificed for us all so that we may live our love for others should be the same kind of love we should try to love others like jesus loved us he was willing to give his life for everybody in situations, we need to act like Christ and walk away from a situation that allow allows you to feel that God is smiling down on you. 
you know, don't when you get into a, a bad situation with somebody, don't sit there and argue with them because Proverbs 26 4 says, Don't answer the foolish argument of fools, or you'll become as foolish as they are. When you're out there arguing with somebody, nobody can decipher which one's the fool. So it makes you both look bad. And God's reward for this beatitude is be shown mercy. If we can show mercy, that God will be if we can show mercy to people, then God will be able to show mercy upon us. Just like if we forgive people, God will be able to forgive us. How's he gonna forgive us if we don't forgive someone else or show mercy on somebody? And then the next beatitude is God blesses those who hearts are, whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. The Old Testament um, to this is Psalms twenty four, three through four. Who may climb a mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose heart, hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols, will never tell lies. Don't tell lies, especially ones where you say, I swear to God, I swear to God, I didn't do that. That's not a good lie to tell, especially if you are lying. Because God may hold you to it. God values honesty. Dishonesty comes, you know, dishonesty comes easy, especially when we could be it could cost us something or make us uncomfortable or put us in an unfavorable position. You know, a lot of times people lie because they know they're going to be put in a position that they need to lie or they think they need to lie. But one thing you need to know is that dishonesty hinders relationships and it makes your relationship with God impossible. When you lose the trust of somebody, it's hard to get that back. It's hard to get them to trust you again. And if we lie, we begin to deceive ourselves deceive ourselves and we have to tell lies to protect lies this can cause us great grief in our lives and add extra stress hoping someone doesn't find out i remember when i was a kid one time we were playing tag and my dad had these coveted red maple trees in our front yard there and we were playing tag and my sister was chasing me and i grabbed a tree and spun around it and it broke off so i was like oh no he's gonna be mad so i took some duct tape and i taped it up and just sitting there thinking about when he found out about it was man it was so stressful it would have been better for me to just run and tell him right away and then i didn't have to worry about it but he was out there mowing the grass and bumped it with a lawnmower and it fell over so i mean that's one thing you know that's one instance where it caused a lot of extra stress in my life and then uh old testament was psalms 51 10 create in me a clean heart O god Renew a loyal spirit within me. Because we are born sinners, we tend to please ourselves and not God. Um, King David followed a path and took another man's life. Like David, though, we must ask God to cleanse us from within, filling our hearts with spirits with those thoughts and desires. The right conduct can come only from a clean heart and spirit. So ask God to create a pure heart and spirit in you. You know, pray you know, everybody does sin in their life. Everybody does wrong. Just pray about it and try not to do it again. Do the best you can. Clashing worldly values is deception is acceptable. You know, you watch the news today and you watch these politicians and all these people in power today. They think lying to somebody is the new normal, you know. They think that you can't fact check them and go back and see what they said before. They just say what's in the moment and they'll bend to everything that they can, bend to the knee of whoever's asking the question. And, and you need to remember one thing, that a line is one of the Ten Commandments. So how do we develop this attitude? First John 3, 1 through 3. See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. So the people of today who are out here doing all this to other people, they, they don't know God, so they can't recognize a Christian as being one of God's children. So says, Dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But when we know, well, we know that we'll be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure, just as he is pure. And I want to go back to Revelations 1 7 and read this passage. It says, Look, he comes with the clouds of heaven, and everyone will see him, even who's even those who pierced him. 
and all nations of the world will mourn for him. Yes, amen. When Jesus comes back, even the non-believers are going to know who he is. They're going to see it for see him for who he is, and then it's going to be too late for them. It's going to be, they're going to be like, oh no, why didn't I do better? Why didn't I listen? So as believers, self-worth is based on a fact that God's love, God's love and calls us children. Knowing that we're his children, we should encourage us to do as, live as Jesus did. Try to, we're not going to be as perfect as he is, but we need to try to do the best we can. Verse 1 tells us that God's children, it tells us we are God's children, and verse 2 tells us who we are becoming. We need to become Jesus, or like Jesus. What, what we must have to grow to reassemble God, we need victory over sin, we need love for others, and we need confidence before God. Being a good Christian, being good, being a good Christian is something that happens overnight. It takes time, it takes a, long, a lot of effort. It took me 43 years to be, you know, at being a sinner. It ain't gonna, I'm not gonna be a perfect Christian overnight. It's gonna take me a long time to get back where I need to be. It will not be complete until we see Jesus face to face. And knowing this should be our ultimate goal in life, motivate us to become morally straight, free from corruption of sin, and take action to remain morally fit. God's reward for doing this, we get to see God. Have everlasting life in the kingdom of heaven. And other alternative in eternity is... The other alternative is eternity in hell. Where we suffer forever. Do we want that? Do we want to live in hell forever? Or do we want to live with God and, and praise Him and be joyful with Him? And one other thing I want to share today about the world today. It's, you know, it's happened before. You know, it's when Jesus was being arrested and they was putting on trial with Pilate you know Pilate gave uh, the crowd a chance you know the Pilate's house that morning he asked him he said which one do you which do you want me to release Barabbas or Jesus who called Jesus who's called the Messiah he knew very well the religious leaders had arrested Jesus out of envy just then Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat his wife sent in this message leave the innocent man alone I suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. Meanwhile, the leading priests and elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. So the governor asked again, which of these two do you want me to release to you? The crowd shouted back, Barabbas. So people gave the Messiah up for a criminal. Isn't that kind of what the, the world's doing today is they're putting these criminals that are they think they're unjustified, you know. They're putting them in, in front of everybody else in the world. You know, instead of putting up a hero or somebody who's religious or a Christian or or Jesus, instead of worshiping somebody like them, they're worshiping a criminal. And it's just like in the first beatitude where it says to have a, the mercy, you know, or to show about... um idols in the second one there it's uh who do not worship idols i mean they're worshiping criminals they're worshiping people that should not be worshiped and that's the problem i mean if you go back in this bible everything happens again and again and again just like the israelites when they got out of israel god they were in there for 40 400 years being a slave god takes moses in there and leads them out parts the red sea gets them all out of egypt not one of them died, makes it to the wilderness, and they start complaining. You know, then he gives them food. They complain about that. He gives them water. They complain about that. You know, it's just human nature that nobody's ever satisfied with life. It's something that, you know, we need to do as human beings is read the Bible more and become happy with what we have. You know, we do live in the greatest country in the world. We have the freedom to... to go to church we have the freedom of religion there's other countries where you can't do this you can't talk on the internet about god and you can't share the word you'll be killed for it and persecuted and if we don't keep up with the christians keep up going one day they could do come after us christians too because uh in the next couple of beatitudes that's what it talks about and jesus made a jesus made a statement he said if they hate you for Loving in me, don't be mad because they hated me first. So just think about that and pray for this country. Pray that people can turn back to God and repent from our sins and 
love each other and, and quit doing evil for evil because that's never going to fix anything. Thank you. Um, amen. And uh, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button. Check out my YouTube channel. I also on Facebook. Um, leave a comment or questions if you have any, and I'll try to help you with it. And remember, uh, I'm a member of Crestview Baptist Church. And uh, Josh has um, online service at 11 o'clock a.m. on Sunday morning, plus service at the church. He also has a 6 o'clock online on Sunday evening. And we also meet at the church at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. And he has an online service on there, too. So you guys have a blessed week. And uh, looking forward to doing the next video for next week. Thank you. Bye.